welcome on board kanchana thank you so much give me a second okay uh, let's start the session uh it's 7 one, one minute past 7 uh you all are all are welcome to this uh today webinar conducted by conducted uh, by uh, monthly webinar conducted by sustainable consumption and production forum of sri lanka sdg forum sri lanka uh today the speaker going to be uh, ms kanchana virapon she is a founder of uh, eco v she has been conducting environmental training programs for last 20 years 28 years and uh, specialized in sustainability and uh, further deep ecology buds uh, wetlands and organic farming uh an invasive species climate change uh and conscious uh, consumerism etc it's a very wide range of uh, activities she is uh, engaging she has uh, conducted training programs and addressed uh, conferences symposiums and uh, the topic of sustainability and conscious consumerism which is very closer to our the topic sustainable consumption and production especially the uh, the responsible consumption and production and textile uh, garments factories government departments schools universities private sector and religious institutions and for various public stakeholder so uh, in pune sri lanka in australia usa bangladesh and when make like uh, countries so without taking much time i hand over the forum to ms uh, virapon to conduct uh, uh, today's uh, session so what do you uh, uh, ms virapon thank you so much I bow unto everybody, um, and I would like to request everybody to keep their microphone muted. And I'm sure that the question and answer session will be at the end, so uh, the organizers will allow for us to maybe chit chat during that time. So thank you so much for this opportunity today. Um, I always enjoy uh, working with Sri Lanka, as my it's my mother country. and for your information i'm joining from new delhi india so uh, thanks to zoom during this uh, very difficult time uh, though we are physically apart we could continue uh, knowledge sharing experience sharing uh, using the uh, online platform so thank you so much for joining us uh, today uh, so let me start my uh, talk uh, or i don't know whether it's uh, i i believe that you can learn something new throughout this session if you already know that please share any experience with me but if there are any new things i hope that you will continue uh, to follow some good things if you learn new uh, today so let me share my uh, presentation um with you um uh sorry this one second uh before starting uh we recon uh, you will have uh, 40 minutes uh, time for your presentation and the rest we will allow for the question and answers from the audience sure thank you, Th thank you so much so um, yes anybody who has any questions during the middle of the session please keep them for that uh, after 40 mi uh, minutes of my uh, talk so yeah <clears throat> the the topic um given to me uh, by the organizers today is conscious consumerism for a healthy life on a healthy planet 
So um, what I'm going to share with you is uh, that my, my personal experience as well as my learning from mainly from uh, the conscious uh, consumerism we started in 2013, especially um, as, a, as a forum in our organization, Eco-Friendly Volunteers, because we got a training on consumerism issues um, from Malaysia and many Sri Lankans got this training from uh, a Consumer Association of Penang uh, from Malaysia. So I think uh, many of us are working on this topic uh, about consumerism uh, and the consumer issues in Sri Lanka today. So thanks to that training, we are still disseminating some of the information that we learned from them. And also we added something uh, more because we are an environmental organization. So we have added the environmental aspect for my today's uh, talk. Um, so, um, yes, so the topic has two, uh, two aspects. One is conscious consumerism and uh, one is uh, healthy life. So um, what is healthy life? We all talk about healthy life during this pandemic. I'm sure at this moment, some of you, some of our friends, May I kindly remind to keep your microphone muted so then I can keep talking, you can listen. Thank you. So um, some of you may be sick even at this moment with the, with the uh, maybe unknown uh, Omicron or whatever the uh, variant we have at this uh, time. But when we talk about healthy life, it is physical, mental, and social well-being. So all three aspects are very much equally important to talk, it's a healthy life. And it is, when it comes to healthy life, it is very much, I see it as an individual responsibility. If, if I get sick today, not only I am suffering, but my loved one, my family, and my society, they are also suffering. So that is why it is an individual responsibility to maintain a healthy life in any aspect, either physical or mental or social well-being. So you must uh, be responsible of your own healthy life or sick life. So because it's an individual responsibility. And also don't forget when we get sick, environment is also suffering because all the medications coming from nature and all our, um, um, at this moment, I'll give you one example, masks, masks or PPP kits or whatever are going back to nature as waste. So nature is suffering a lot if I get sick. So therefore, uh, it is a responsibility towards me, myself, my family and society and for the environment. So the that is the healthy life section of my talk today. What is conscious consumerism? So enabling us to be healthy, we have to be very conscious of our physical, mental, and social status. So that consciousness is simply saying wise and awareness, and of course, being responsible for our consumption. So consumption of our resources, our food, our waste, consumption of our um, natural environment, everything. So that is another responsibility. And we call it conscious consumerism because we have to do it consciously. In Sinhala, we call it our bodhain. We have to be very much conscious about our all activities, enabling us to have conscious consumerism. So these two aspects of this topic today are very much important to uh, achieve the holistic uh, uh, results of this topic. So if I show these photographs for you, my question is, is this healthy? This photograph, can you say whatever you are seeing here, is it healthy? And unfortunately via online, I can't get the uh, answers from you, but I know you are aware that this is not healthy. And why I'm telling this, I'll tell you why. Before telling why, I really want to show this photo as well. This, there are four pictures in this slide. And this is, I know, most of your favorite food, especially if you have children born after 2000, 
millennial kids, their favorite would be like this. And oily, sweet, and um, uh, maybe colorful, all this food is favorite food of kids. And my question to you as adults, do you know how much oil you are consuming in these food? Do you know how much uh, fatty acids that you are consuming from these food? Do you know um, how much trans fats you are using uh, when you consume this food? And do you know that you are eating tar, tar when you eat this food? Most of us are not fully aware of the quantities of all bad ingredients coming to us via this consumption, the food consumerism, the food consumption. So that is the issue for us. Always when we talk about this topic, conscious consumerism, our duty is to let others uh, understand what they are eating or what they are consuming in other aspects, not only eat, but what I took uh, the, as the first uh, part of the presentation today is food, because very much we are into eating. We are, we, our whole day, if you take the whole day, 90% of the day would be eating something, munching something or drinking something, because that's the human, human nature and of course animal nature as well. All of the animal world members, they eat, enabling us to live. But some of this food, if you eat more, you won't be able to live. That is the problem. So it's our duty to tell what is here. And if we have that awareness, I'm sure you won't touch any of these kind of food. So junk food. I'm just jumping into the topic junk food because it's a very much uh, common topic. And many of you must be knowing. Uh, today, you must be thinking, oh, let's have some junk food or let's have a junk food party. Oh, or oh, that is junk food. So what is junk food? It is just a slang term uh, for very much uh, 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 for food, either no nutritional value or maybe very, very little nutritional value. But as I said, all the animals are eating food or consuming food, enabling to live more. But when the nutritional value is less or zero, will, will you be able to live a healthy life? So that is the problem because most of these kind of food have a lot of fat or oil or sugar or salt or high calories. So more, this is not healthy. So that is what we have to be very conscious but about what we are eating. So knowing that you are having junk food, you can continue eating junk food because it is, it is your responsibility because you already know about it. But not knowing and consuming this food is something wrong, which I don't like. Because if I don't know what I am having and I should know about it, then I can decide either to have it or not. So that is my point here. We have to be very conscious and aware what we are consuming every day in our life. So there is another topic going along with junk food that is energy drinks. I'm sure you have seen some advertisements in the TV and of course a lot of youngsters because when we started this conscious consumerism program under eco-friendly volunteers, our target group was youngsters because that is our next generation where the health uh, organizations are telling us they will be uh, uh, the generation that is the generation with lot of NCDs, non-communicable diseases, diabetes, cholesterol, heart attacks, and all these kind of things. That is why we targeted the young generation and energy drink is very much uh, going in line with the young generation. They love to drink these energy drinks. I'm sure in the market, they are really, all the supermarkets, the energy drink uh, cans are full now, nowadays. Even this time I saw in Sri Lanka, it is really there and I really go nuts sometimes when I see that and when youngsters and cricket matches and volleyball, whatever the sports they are consuming this very openly. They don't have no therapeutic benefit and many un un ingredients are not mentioned in those drinks and this is just high unregulated caffeine or high sugar and you will get only uh, most of the 
diseases like, you know, heart attacks, diabetes, cardiac abnormalities, and mood and behavioral changes. This is something that I'm very much concerned about because human, when they are having some mood disorders, that is very bad for the society because now today at this moment you will be happy but next next moment you will be angry and you may end up stabbing somebody because you really don't know what the mental uh, uh, the the well being is telling you to tell uh, do so that is if if that condition is triggered by an energy drink that you paid and bought without knowing that is so bad. And this is same with the, uh, the hyperactivity actions among the kids. They don't know that they have a hyperactivity disorders, but some of the food that I'm going to talk today may trigger the hyperactivity among these kids. So that is the problem that we have to address as responsible adults. So all these food, what I mentioned so far is having a negative impact on us like having obese conditions and having fat layers in our body or NCDs, non-communicable diseases, and also very much negative impact on nature because these food are waste. So most of the time giving us waste when we eat them and of course creating waste like wrappers and all these plastic or paper, whatever the, uh, the wrappers um, came those food to the market because no natural food uh, need a wrapper. To eat a guava, you don't need a wrapper, but of course under this uh, 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 commercial gimmick uh, situation, they are wrapping it with some rigiform or something like that, which is useless. But to pluck a fruit and eat, no need of wrappers, but this food is obviously Ref, uh, we come in with the wrappers, which creates a lot of waste. And of course, this third picture with the albatross kid, uh, chick, uh, full of uh, tonic or whatever, the fizzy drink uh, lids in his tummy, uh, that carcass has full of those lids. I'm sure you, will, you have seen this in the internet. So these are the problems that we are creating for the nature, uh, sake of our, our consumption. And of course, not only that, we also have many issues like dengue issues. Now, I have seen uh, uh, in the media, social media these days, most of our health uh, staff are doing a lot of awareness programs. Uh, along with COVID, we also have the dengue issue. So all these uh, the, the issues are uh, results of our consumption. So if we consume all these uh, um, containers that tires or food containers or clay pots, anything. If we really, really consume consciously, this trouble won't be there because no waste, if we consume, is respons consume them responsibly, uh, responsibly as well as dispose it uh, in a proper way, it's probably recycling. But we are not doing that because we are very ignorant as human. Therefore, we are getting such issues, uh, health issues and environmental issues. And not only that, we use the most common convenient methods of giving solutions, which is really creating more problems. When we have dengue issue, uh, people are asking um, government or the health sector to come and fog. Fogging is really, really bad because it's not only killing mosquitoes. Most of the time, it's not killing mosquitoes, but killing our bees, butterflies, dragonflies, damselflies, and all our environmental friendly insects because they are more sensitive for this fogging. Or they spray oil on water, enabling to uh, 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 prevent um, mosquito breeding. Why these common convenient methods? If we do our consumption in a very responsible way, these kind of uh, um, bad, uh, uh, these kind of actions won't be uh, needed, which are creating more negative impact for the nature. So, and also most of our uh, uh, consumers are going for mosquito coils or vaporizers. And I'm going to share you with, uh, share some facts with you and. I really want you to think about your mosquito coil consumption when you see that slide, which is my next slide. So we need a lot of awareness. Awareness, awareness is not the 
enough uh, uh, part of it. We need the consciousness. We all know something is bad, but if we are still consuming this, it, then it's the problem. So that is why we really, really need to be very responsible about our consumerism and cleaning campaigns. Yes, we need them, but rather than doing cleaning campaigns, why can't we uh, uh, stop polluting? So that is my uh, point. So this is what radio and TV says for us in Sri Lanka. Whenever I travel, I listen to the radio also. And in the TV prime time, uh, TV time, there are mosquito coil advertisements. And they say, go and spray in the room and close it for 30 minutes and be outside and then mosquitoes will be gone. Nobody really tell us this fact, which is, one mosquito coil when you burn will be equal for 75 to 137 cigarette smoke. And most of our, our in, in our society, males are smoking, father or uncle or brother or grandfather, they are smoking. So it is an individual thing that they are doing. Of course, we have some passive smokers because of that, but at least they are smoking. But when a mosquito coil is there in the living room, when you are watching TV or when you have your family time, all of you are smoking. So do you like that idea? And of course, they, uh, the, the, if you spray something, uh, mosquito coil rather than mosquito spray, that is also have volatile matter, which is also creating the uh, indoor air pollution, which is really giving us bad impact. It, will, it can cause asthma, breathing difficulties, throat irritation, headache, allergies, and of course, cancer. Would you like that? Because you paid for the coil or a sprayer and then you are using them and you are getting, uh, as a result of you are getting all these uh, uh, diseases or uh, uh, health uh, um, problems. And imagine if there is a pregnant mother that unborn innocent child is also going through these kind of things. So it is really, really bad if you are not uh, aware of the impact of these things and consuming, then it's very bad. I believe it's a crime. But if you are aware of that, and of course still saying, oh, it's okay, it's only one mosquito coil, I'll do it today and tomorrow I won't take it, then it's your responsibility, it's not ours. So that is, where you have to bring your consciousness along with your awareness. And a lot of cleaning campaigns end up with this, burning waste, uh, all the organic matter, and of course, polythene, plastic, and uh, paper, everything together. We are very happy uh, uh, society, every day burning our waste. And evening, they just nicely sweep, sweep and burn. And, I have a neighborhood in my uh, Colombo. Uh, my, my neighborhood is very much against with me because always when they are burning and I go against that and they am the culprit. When I'm trying to stop this um, uh, bad habit, then I become the culprit. And I'm sure there are some of you who have the same issue because I get a lot of, for the organization, we are getting a lot of complaints about it. People are burning when we say not to burn, they are really against us. And unfortunately, we really need some um, uh, laws here. And of course, the burning waste is uh, uh, giving us dioxin. Dioxin is a very heavy uh, gas, which is really, really uh, uh, harmful and uh, can give us cancer. So please, if you are burn have a habit of burning uh, waste, please don't do that. Along with that, what we say is as nature lovers, you are burning all the butterflies, all the bees, and of course, Gadavilla, the earthworms, which is really, really a crime because they are the most useful creatures on this planet. And not only that, we are burning waste, we are eating bad food. And of course, there are some silent killers like microplastic. We are not aware of it. Whatever we throw to the nature, it comes back to us. So whenever you throw a plastic bottle to a um, garbage dump, or even maybe you give it to the municipal council rather than giving for the recycling, and then that goes to nature and comes back to us uh, uh, after series of uh, events, 
as microplastic. This little shrimp has a green uh, dots in his body and that is microplastic. His thumb has uh, blue uh, dots that th those are microplastics and microfiber. So from the ocean via salt, uh, via um, uh, fish, we are getting these microplastics back uh, in our body through the water cycle and food chain and that can create us cancer. So all these negativities are there. Can we make a positive change? My main message today is among whatever happened in the world, among the negativities happening in the world, at least there should be some positive thing that we could do. So please be a part of that positive change rather than being complaining and then not doing anything. You can be the change you want to see in this world. So start within you. When you buy something, think about, am I buying something healthy or not? And then you can think about, is this going to be a problem for somebody or not? And of course, it is your money, so you have to be responsible about what you're paying for and read the labels because most of these bad food or bad drinks or uh, whatever uh, the, the, when I say bad, it is, it may be not as bad as that much, you know, you, it may be something good, but you have to, you have to read the ingredients part and of course be aware. So I have taken this beautiful label just as a sample to tell you the label has mentioned everything in it in that product. So it is your decision to uh, read it, uh, your responsibility to read it and decide what to buy, what not to buy. Because if you are aware of this label, then you know what you are buying. So that is, that's why I'm showing this sample. And here the, the, the most visible part is the trade name. So which is clear, beautiful, and you just go get attracted to this product. But in the, in the little letters here in this, uh, somewhere in this label, there is a section called ingredients. To see that you will definitely need some spectacles because they are tiny, tiny letters. But still, we can't really blame the producer because it is mentioned what is there inside this production. So that is where we as consumers must be aware. Uh, that is our responsibility to be aware about the ingredients and uh, buy whatever you need. Under the section of ingredients, there is a, a, a section called E numbers or INS numbers. You will find them. You read the ingredients, you will find all these numbers. And there is no meaning for numbers if you don't know this. So please go through this chart and uh, that this chart is showing you what are the EOINS numbers are. If the label has a number, let's say 102, then you have to understand it's a color. If it is 200 something, then it is a preservative. If it is 300 something, it should be antioxidant. And 400, 500. And if it is 600, it is a flavor enhancer. So which is something that you have to notice more and 700, 800, and thousands, or th more. So there are numbers which are allowed to put into the processed food. And of course, they have to mention in the label, that is the law. So it is there, it is up to you to read it. So that is where you have to uh, 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 get educated about the E numbers and INS numbers. At least remember this list. If you see these numbers, any product when you buy for yourself or for your kids, please read this uh, 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 the, the content and you will understand what are the repercussions. We call it danger list. There are many countries who have banned some of these colors. Even though it is allowed to food, allowed to add to the food, they have banned it. So these are the numbers that you have to understand. Uh, you have to be aware and try to avoid because they can create uh, potential problems like hyperactivity, asthma, rashes, allergies, gastric upsets, and a uh, lot of you know uh, um, uh, conditions. So please be aware of these colors: 100, 200, and 2400, and 1000, 429 are colors, and 211, which is very commonly used for our sauces, like you know, tomato ketchup or whatever the sauce, and that is a preservative. So those 
if possible, try to avoid because it could cause these problems in our bodies. And of course, there are some other jargons I want to go through quickly, BPA, bisphenol A. So bisphenol A is very much related to plastics and they are there uh, 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 mentioned in the, in the plastic bottles. So if the, if the bottle says it's BPA free, then it is quite okay to use, but bisphenol A is not a good uh, um, uh, content uh, if you have them in your plastic or even CDs, DVDs. And of course, this bisphenol A could be uh, uh, in your electronic bills. So if you are using a um, receipt, from your teller machine, from your uh, supermarket shopping. If the, uh, the bill is like thermal bill, then that ink can have bisphenol A. So please don't touch and uh, touch your lips or don't let it contaminate, uh, uh, cont be in touch with your body because it can contaminate your uh, uh, body as well with the bisphenol A. So please avoid and don't ever give any DVDs or CDs uh, to play with, uh, for the kids to play with. Be careful because they can have these uh, uh, chemicals uh, which cause some problems like cancer and uh, it can affect brain behavior and uh, many other issues. So MSG, I'm sure many of you are aware, actually when we started this program in 2013 in Sri Lanka, MSG was like many restaurants contacted us and they said that they are going free of MSG because it is a flavor enhancer and it is, uh, in, uh, it is mentioned in the labels in 600s. So if you are um, using any um, alternatives for Maldive fish, that could be a MSG containing. And it, if you are using any flavor, uh, uh, savory flavors, or uh, actually they are very tasty, or even artificial chicken flavor, it could be MSG. So be careful because MSG can create headaches, flushing, sweating, and you know ultimately bipolar and a lot of brain issues. So if you want to get those uh, 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 conditions, you can use MSG, or maybe it is not true because your body is more resistant to MSG, but who knows until and unless you get any of these disorders, you don't know whether MSG is good for your body in or not. So it's better to avoid and be aware what is there. You can really think of it is your responsibility to use it or not. And this, this slide is a bit crowded, but I really wanted to use it to show you the red uh, uh, the, the, the dots are spoons. Usually, uh, according to the health sector of Sri Lanka, non-diabetic person can have six teaspoons of sugar per day, which is not only sugar as, as sugar as sugar, but it could be some biscuits, for bananas, or any other fruits. Everything can come as sugar, and you are allowed to have only six teaspoons. But if you are having two teaspoons in one tea, then you can, if you have uh, three teas per day, then the, your quota is gone. So this slide is about all our sugary drinks in Sri Lanka. Starting with Milo, there are uh, almost four teaspoons and ending up with Coca-Cola Buddy here and nine teaspoons of sugar. And you never feel, if you put nine teaspoons uh, of sugar into water, can you drink it? No, you can't because you don't feel the sugary taste because of other chemicals. And this poster is given to us by the community physicians of Sri Lanka health sector. So thanks to them, they have analyzed the sugar levels. Actually, after they did this poster, many uh, fizzy drink producers have reduced their sugar levels. But again, we tested it's still the sugar level is high. So we really want you to, uh, we want to tell you, it's up to you to decide whether you want to consume these or not, or uh, it's up to you because it's your money. And salt is also, uh, you have to consume very less, enabling you to stay healthy. It is advised to have one teaspoon per day. So a lot of Sri Lankans are using salt in rice when you are cooking rice. Do you really need rice in, uh, uh, salt in rice? No, you don't. It is just the taste but that you have trained. And start without uh, using uh, salt, you will taste the rice. 
batteki rasa and salt nathi una hama. So you will understand that. So uh, you don't need to do that. Likewise, you have to reduce because many other food, biscuits and any other, if you eat acharu or whatever, salt is coming. So you can't have that much of salt per day. So you have to reduce your salt uh, consumption, enabling to stay healthy. And of course, knowing those things, you will get figures from your uh, commercials. When you watch TV, there are a lot of commercials telling you what to eat and you know which are tasty. This is also something that I want to point out. Point out you have to consume your TV very consciously. Don't get slaves of our advertisements. Don't get trapped in our un unethical commercial gimmicks because there is no con control body in Sri Lanka for such. They are using those all um, bad influence on us with these commercials and kids are getting very much affected. They, they show the kids how they eat greedily and then they, it's tasty and with the, you know, milk uh, uh, mustache or whatever. And of course, what hurting me is they are always using, oh, this food is my mother is giving me with a lot of love. So they are compare, comparing mother's love with all these uh, uh, food, which are not really good for kids. So please be consciously consume TV when you watch TV. Don't buy products next day after which, watching that advertisement. Think twice, be wise, and of course, be aware. And whether you really want to spend your money because of that commercial when you are shopping next day. So that is also conscious consumerism. So what can we do? Yes, there are a lot of challenges. Start within you. Think about it, be aware. Should I live a healthy life? Should I uh, maintain my family as a healthy family? And of course, uh, uh, should I pay for my medicine? So something up to you and you have to start uh, healthy consumption, start within your lunch. Always uh, cook uh, healthy. Don't use all these soup cubes or whatever other artificial flavors. We have enough uh, ingredients which are very natural, very tasty. Be a nice cook and you can do that. And when you cook healthy, uh, serve others healthy as well. If you, do, if you have a packet of biscuit which you believe that it is, it is not good, don't give it as a gift to somebody because that is really bad. If it is not healthy for you, it is not healthy for any other one. So talk about it, start talking about healthy cooking, healthy eating, healthy consumption. Then you will create yourself an image as a, oh, that lady is always talking about healthy food. We should not give any gifts, very something bad. So that is what happened to me. People are very scared of even bringing me uh, uh, one kilo of uh, refined sugar, white sugar, which is really, really nasty. Always, they, if they want to gift me, they always bring brown sugar because brown sugar is better than refined white sugar. So something like that. You can create your own uh, ima image, uh, enabling others to understand what is good, what is bad. So that is also uh, something for you to think. Be, uh, be yourself uh, very conscious about that and be, uh, be that healthy person. And of course, drinks. There are a lot of alternatives for sugary drinks. Drink water, water, water is the best. Morning, start the day with water, go to sleep with water. And of course, dry coconut water, which is really good for brain de development. When you uh, crack a coconut, drink that. We had that habit of drinking that uh, coconut water, but nowadays people are using um, uh, milk powder, the coconut milk powder, the, there, there is the water unfortunately. Uh, so this is some, these are some challenges, but try to drink always Tambili and Kurumba and, you know, all natural drinks, plain tea, green tea, herbal tea, without sugar. They are so beautiful. And of course, if you want to try some uh, new um, uh, uh, drinks, these are some alternatives I'm giving you with their therapeutic uh, benefits. Lemongrass. Have you ever tried boiling lemongrass in water and drinking as it is so tasty? Whenever we have training programs, we give them as tea and people love it. People really admire because they have never tried it. So start trying. Grow a lemongrass in a pot in your balcony and start cutting the leaves from top. Put it into water, boil it and drink it. It's healthy and it's nice. So 
these are the benefits like you know it can have the uh, the property of cancer fighting so a lot of uh, health benefits about 10 health benefits are there in lemongrass you can read about it uh, online more and of course tulsi in india now now i'm living in india tulsi is the most sacred plant here. They have, everybody has a tulsi plant, even parks, they come and pluck and eat the leaves. So I also grow up that uh, uh, habit of uh, plucking tulsi leaves and eating it. In Boralaskamo, in our office, we have tulsi plants to give away for the people because we know the benefits of it. If you are getting headache, drink tulsi tea. It is really good because you can get rid of the headache. Having said about the headache, Headache is just an indication of dehydration. So definitely you, you don't have to have two paracetamol pills when you are having a headache. If you drink more water, you will get rid of the headache. So that is also conscious consumerism. Do you really want to go for medicine or go with the natural alternatives? So that is something. And of course, have you tried the blue tea? This is very popular in Thailand. They have blue rice, blue tea, uh, blue tea, blue rice, and blue, um, um, uh, what is this, uh, dessert. So that is our new Nilkataralu flower. You drink it. And if you add a bit of lime in the Nilkataralu juice, after adding it into warm water, it will become a beautiful purple drink, and you can drink it. And of course, rampe. Have you tried rampe drink, Pandan? This is some uh, um, uh, popular drinks uh, for Malaysia and Thailand. You have a lot of benefits. So start drinking them. And of course, Rossell, this is another cordial we can have. You can drink it. And uh, it's beautiful uh, red color cordial. Kids love it. And you, you just, uh, you can search about it and get it. Uh, hibiscus tea or Rossell, we call it. Like with mosquitoes, of course, there are a lot of more, nature friendly ways, use natural oils, uh, grow the aspetia, let the spiders live, let the geckos live in your houses and they will lead the mosquitoes and don't uh, uh, let uh, mosquitoes breed in your water containers. So then you don't have any issue of using uh, coils or sprays, you will be safe. And of course, the last bit of my talk is try to walk on waste free path. Uh, Get rid of uh, with those plastic brooms, go for natural products. And if you have any uh, brushes or anything, go for like natural loofah and uh, kohu, pol kohu and all these things. Even go back to the polmudda for cleaning purpose. Don't go for those plastic uh, sponges because that is something that we are creating uh, ourselves uh, unhealthy and nature unhealthy. So these all are natural and very nice for yourself and for the nature. This is my last story. I really wanted to share this. Recently, I got this bird nest and it was full of those plastic broom, the koya, uh, uh, plastic kohuwaling eka hadilatik bay, candy. So it's really bad because nature is getting our, uh, our results, uh, the impacts. So it's really bad that they are also using plastic waste uh, in their nesting. So, which is really sad to see. And of course, you can use all these, uh, you know, waste into back to the nature, uh, the composting, eggshells and, uh, you know, orange peels, everything. You can make compost if you want to. I live on the first floor and I am making my own compost. I have never given uh, my waste to the municipal council for last 22 years, even in Sri Lanka and India. I make my own compost and I grow my own vegetables. So this is my lifestyle. I, I always encourage you to live with nature because you will get the mental relaxation and happiness through nature. Consume nature wisely, consciously, and you will be very healthy. You will get a lot of positive energy when you live with nature, and that will help you to fight with diseases. And of course, spend time with nature, try to meditate with nature, try to relax with nature, let kids be with nature, Green energy is the best energy you can have and uh, breathe well and live happily with nature. So in summary, today what I really wanted to tell you is try to connect with nature and admire the services given by nature rather than becoming a waste, uh, uh, becoming a uh, human with waste because waste is the most bad word and the action done by the human 
and that creates a lot of problems for environment and ourselves. So food waste or whatever it is, waste. Waste is not really good term. So act responsibly to yourself, for the loved ones, for the society and the nature, because that is the change you can bring. And whenever you buy, be aware, think twice, because it's your money and you are responsible. And my last message today is you won't be able to do whatever I am doing and whatever I told you, but at least there would be something that you can do from today onwards. So try to find that little thing you can do to make a better change. Thank you so much. And if you want to find more information, we are on, uh, online, Facebook, you can join with me and with us, eco-friendly volunteers. And we have a page called, group called Conscious Consumerism. You are welcome to join us. Thank you so much. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Kanchana, for your uh, valued presentation. The session, though we are very, very much like to listen it uh, many more hours, but uh, the time constraints make us uh, to the limit. But I think uh, within this uh, short period, you have given us a very strong message how to convert the, uh, how to make the uh, SDG 12 uh, into practice. That is the responsible con consumption. Thank you very much for your the valued uh, presentation. Uh, let me see uh, if, if any questions available. You have any questions from the present uh, the from the participant? You can raise it. Uh, either you can raise your hand, or you can put it uh, right down on your uh, in the chat box. There is a one question from uh, uh, Mr. Namis Musafar, one of our member. The question. Uh, how can how can an average person uh, effectively balance the uh, trilemma of healthy consumption, marketing for the promotion uh, for consumption and uh, technology uh, development? Uh, can you make uh, any comment about this? Question? Is it in the chat box, Mr. Gaon? Uh, uh, yeah, it's the, it's available in the uh, chat box. The first uh, first question. Uh, okay, first because oh, could you please give us natural alternate? Oh, but the que first question I see is a natural alternate because I didn't get the um, the clear okay. picture of the question that you mentioned just now. Um, no, it's a. Uh, I will I will uh, reboot it again, but you okay. can take the you can take the uh, the other question. Okay, you... there is uh, somebody had asked. Um, uh, please give us a natural alternative to mosquito coils and sprays. Yes, we have natural alternatives. If you can have um, cinnamon oil, uh, so many essential oils: citrus oil, uh, cinnamon oil, cit citronella oil, and even orange oil. All these oils have the uh, the, the the property of repelling mosquitoes. So with whatever the the, the oils, uh, citronella oil is very commonly uh, available. You uh, wear something long if possible, because otherwise you have to apply all over your body, cover the body as much as possible, and then put little drops on your uh, exposed areas of your skin, and then mosquitoes won't come. And of course, mosquito net is the best when you are sleeping because you have to use it because we are a tropical country. We, you have to get rid of, you, you can't get rid of the mosquitoes. Um, therefore, when you are sleeping, use a mosquito net. And of course, um, you can have the, uh, the burning of uh, mosquito oils, like there are some oil burners. So around six o'clock in the evening, you just let the uh, water and oil burn under a little tea light candle and that smell will repel the mosquitoes. So these are the solutions. And of course we have good old days, kajuleli uh, don't put uh, a tire pucha nepa. That was another habit that we had, uh, please avoid it. Uh, Cohoba, the neem leaves, cohoba leaves are also good if you put them into the some um, charcoal, the anguru, and all these things will repel your mosquitoes. Around your house, you can um, 
grow uh, most of these plants which are really good to repel the mosquitoes and of course avoid uh, uh, breeding them in your surrounding um, yeah you can uh, directly uh, refer this uh, the chat box okay right sure Uh, there, I think we need to reach out for, to the supermarkets to cut out on plastics and unhealthy chemicals in food. Those eco-friendly bags are not enough, I think. Yes, that is correct. Um, unfortunately, many um, uh, the producers the, are very difficult to fight with. We as consumers, uh, if we fight with them, the consumer law is there, but there are, there are been many other challenges. Multinational companies, they have a lot of other, a uh, lot of money uh, for, you know, uh, for these uh, court cases and all. Therefore, it's very challenging for us uh, civilians. The best is that we avoid using them. Then the production will be half. And of course, um, this plastic bag issue, we have been fighting with all these supermarkets and producers. It's very difficult. But can plastic bags, you have to carry our bags. And if they are giving, they are charging. But our consumer law is not allowed to, uh, them to charge because there is a, uh, there is a history. I, can't, I don't have time to uh, describe everything, but there is a court case. Therefore, the consumer law is not allowing uh, uh, to charge for a wrapper or a bag, so which is sad. And that is the main problem in Sri Lanka. But otherwise, many countries are charging for bags when they issue. So, um, and any other, okay, question. How can an average person effectively balance the trilemma of healthy consumption, marketing, promote? Yeah, uh, average person, I would say it's very difficult to balance this. Uh, but if you are extraordinary person who is very conscious about these issues and have the have the uh, personality to fight with this, there are a lot of ways you can really uh, do. And um, you just uh, 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 go for the, the the alternatives. Find your own alternatives. Discuss with the companies and uh, let them understand the damage that they are doing. Give them alternatives and let them promote their good products. So always talk about the uh, green labeling, green promotions and everything. So all these things are possible. So eventually then we can really uh, win the battle uh, unless we really become slaves of these advertisements and technological issues. And of course, mainly the problem is currently the, uh, the, the consumers are really going for the convenience rather than uh, needs they are going for wants. So that is the problem with the current consumerism world. Do you really need five pair of shoes? Do you really need 10 handbags? Do you need three, four phones? So that is what where you have to think. The, the needs are very less, but wants are too much. So you really have to be conscious about all these things. And then you can um, uh, try to bring some solutions for such issues. And I don't have more time to answer in detail, so I'm trying to be quick. What are the measures taken to mitigate false food marketing in Sri Lanka? Um, the food, false food marketing, um, consumer law is there for us to fight against things, but advertisement world is not really uh, helping us. Very recently, I heard that um, there was an argument about some advertisements and the civil society. So the advertisement world won about it because of uh, some technical uh, issues and uh, of course, economical angle, because people are thinking that if we lose the economy, uh, if we can't sell some products, we are losing the economy. So these are the things that we have as challenges, but if we are really becoming aware of uh, many of these issues and if we get together uh, and reduce our consumption that would be one way and of course the government has to uh, uh, bring more laws to uh, protect consumers and i don't know when our governments are going for that when we have many more issues than that but we can't stop um, talking about these things until that uh, we have a better time to uh, 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 make public aware of this. So until then, we have to be, I think, in our small bubble and do something. Uh, 
eco-friendly way to dispose fresh milk cartons. Huh? That's a real uh, big thing uh, nowadays because in India also Tetra Packs uh, are they, were there. It was an issue for last uh, three years. Until last three years, there was no solution, but now they are recycling them. So, which is really nice. I'm so happy that they are recycling milk cartons and all uh, uh, fruit juice cartons here. And in Sri Lanka, still we don't have that solution. So until then, I think what I can advise you is, I don't know, milk issue is there in Sri Lanka. So my advice is try to reduce using them because milk is not a healthy uh, 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 food. So you don't really, really need it. But having said that, if you are using any cartons, uh, wash them with little uh, um, water and dry them, keep it. Uh, you can fold the carton and then keep it, stack it. And because we really want to bring the recycling uh, 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 facility for those. So I hope that we can do that in Sri Lanka quite soon. Uh, Mr. Senanayaka, you have a question. I think uh, you raise your hand. You can. Uh, uh... Thank you. Thank you, Nimal. Uh, uh, Kachana, uh, there's a good news to share with you. And uh -huh. uh, uh, and the rest of the the participants, uh, Sri Lanka too. We have a uh, we have a facility now in Kegol okay. uh, to 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 handle you know this tetra pack tissue and mm -hmm. actually the central environment is uh, helping them. So mm -hmm. that is the first first facility in Sri Lanka Wonderful. taking care of yeah yeah. So that is happening, and also Kanchana now since the time is running out. Hmm, now the biggest problem we have with the i think uh, is uh, the awareness the conscious you know that the the consumerism i think the our media is doing the uh, the biggest uh, uh, damage <laughs> yeah because now when you see now you mentioned about you know the prime time news you know the the you know the advertisement you look at all these multi uh, multinational companies yeah. yeah. No, all these media companies, whether it is TV or radio, they depend on the advertisement. Yeah. Okay. So that without the advertisement, they cannot survive. That's so right. they, they, because of that, you know, they, they don't do anything about it. But I think now we are talking about responsible uh, marketing, the ethical marketing, and all that. You know, something should happen. Now you, you all are taking a lot of, you know, the effort to, you know, to keep people aware, but you know. You know, generally, you know, a lot of people uh, in Sri Lanka, because the literacy, though, you know, we have a high literacy rate, but a lot of people be carried away with this advertisement. Yes. Yeah, the general public. Yeah. So they believe. They believe. And, and also, whenever, I mean, I mean, these companies come out with these things, you know, soon after the advertisement, how the, you know, the, their demand has increased. Yeah. Sometimes twofold, threefold. Yes. So I think now, uh, while in the congratulation for your, you know, the actions you are taking, I think we need to come forward and take something to, you know, the control this, you know, the, the unethical advertisement. Yeah. Yeah. Very so, much agree. Yeah. Yeah. Until that happens, until that happens, you know, our, our uh, you know, the task will not be completed. Very true. Otherwise, it will be only one way approach for this problem. That is why we are, um, for organizations like us are not really rich uh, enough to fight with these companies, you know, like they have money, even um, the law is there to protect the consumers, but it's very difficult to uh, file a case and then win that because it takes long time and a lot of money is needed. So that is why we are not going for that at the moment, but we are trying our best to lobby the government in many ways, but unfortunately, uh, from 2013 to 2019, we were doing that, but then the pandemic happened and then the government is now, now the country is in a crisis. So all these are on hold. Um, we really wish that we can have more people, like-minded people, conscious people to fight with these things. So until the time is better, we have to get together and be ready get organized to uh, fight again, I, I believe. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Panchana, for your uh, valued answers or responses for all the questions. Before closing, I have a small question. Uh, the conscious consumerism, how you are going to connect the uh, conscious consumerism and the conscience of people 
अवबोधेनी तो परिभोषणे सहा हिते है क्या नहीं आप क्या नहीं लेकिन मतलब कंसाइंस हाउ यू आर गोइंग टू कनेक्ट दिस टू टुगेदर इट इज इट इज अगेन इंडिविजुअल थिंग because not every people are at the same level of consciousness it is over the period with the experience and the maturity and the level of knowledge that they are gaining they are becoming more conscious about the issues and seeing the things which are not uh, visible so we need more awareness for that enabling to achieve this and uh, more uh, more platforms organizations like yours and by the audience to talk about these issues openly uh, so i think that is how we can connect this and then we will achieve it one day because um, what we really believe is until then we really have to act individually so because it's that's why i very much focus on that individual uh, levels we have to achieve one day together but until that we have to be the uh, the 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 practical solution for all these things yeah basically what i thought actually about the the conscience is basically about the hrda sakshi hrda sakshi of each and every uh, each of us anyway uh, definitely we will have much many so more yeah yeah if i am ready <laughs> Ah, uh, as the time I think uh, has already reached uh, uh, two minutes past twenty uh, hours, so we have we have to close this uh, uh, session now. Thank you very much for uh, the uh, the very valued presentation you made uh, to our our the uh, the SCP community. uh which attached to this uh, one uh anybody wants to make any special thanks to uh uh ms kanchana okay as there is no any voice uh, i'll make again a very uh, great uh, uh thanks for your valued time and uh, the idea the basic concepts about the basic ideas or the basic uh, the mechanism which we have to drive through our society uh, and uh, thank you very much for your time and the the the, uh, the knowledge which you and the experience you, which you have shared with uh, our community and uh, again we wish you a good luck and uh, uh, definitely uh, we are wishing you all a very successful future and a very uh, successful program in your future activities thank you very much thank you very much i bowan i bowan bowan subharatriya khamotama thank you